Hey, uh, Joel, I, uh, I hear you've been uh, pioneering peer-to-peer -peer finance. What does that mean? Uh, well, recently I fell in love with Counterparty, which is uh, sort of like the master coin, but, um, you know, that's built from scratch with some very talented uh, developers, and um, I'm loving it. So, so it's, a, it's a cryptocurrency built on top of the, the Bitcoin blockchain? That's exactly. So there's a number of things you can do with Counterparty, uh, but one of them is user-created assets, um, you know, that and um, trading them. And, you know, it's really, you know, I think it was really the first actually decentralized exchange on top of Bitcoin. I'm looking at the website, uh, counterparty.co. Yeah, mm -hmm, um, that's the right one. They're listing smart properties. So I guess that means that you can create your own tokens for whatever that, that means. Basically create your own coin or create your own asset. Uh, you can exchange them, and there's also some kind of betting platform on top of it. That's true. Yeah, you can have a sort of pure peer-to-peer -peer betting, or um, you know, tr you know, options, futures are adding in, um, as well as you know, a betting on top of a trusted data feed. But it's all sort of peer-to-peer. -peer, so, so here they list uh, XCP. What is that? XCP is the internal um, currency of Counterparty, so it gives you, you know, the ability to issue assets um, or, you know, create certain types of, um, you know, things like a bet. So they don't they don't use Bitcoin internally, or is this more like a? Yeah, that's right. Um, it, it uses this sort of meta meta currency that works, you know, to enable advanced features of Counterparty. Right. So this is a bit like the the fuel that you pay to to use Counterparty. Like exactly. the, the ether for Ethereum. Exactly. I see, I see. Okay. So but let's, no, let's see. There so. was no pre sale though that there were there was burned, you know, that's one of the things that got counterparty in the news first is that people had to burn their bitcoins to get how, right. how many got burned? Like like two thousand bitcoins? Exactly. Yeah. Okay, all right. How, how many did you burn? I didn't burn any. You didn't burn anything. So you can still get any? I mean, but but now you need to just buy them on the on the decentralized exchange. You can get them on a decentralized exchange. There's a couple centralized um, exchanges that support counterparty assets, um, BTR and um, Polonix, and I think some other exchanges are going to be integrating them soon, which is going to be exciting. Mm -hmm. um, and there's also these vending machines that are being set up that will that allow this automatic asset generation. So you just send bitcoins to them, and then you automatically get the XCP back. Um, so there's a number of ways to get XCP. Okay. So so with Bitcoin, it's the it's always useful to look at the blockchain and see what are the transactions that are happening. So for Counterparty, I think there's a site called uh, blockscan.com. Uh, That's right. Yeah. So let's let's take a look there. So here we get the the, the current transactions that are going on. Ah, oh, but but they but they do use the bit the regular Bitcoin address that we are that we're used to. Exactly. Yep. Hmm. The count. The way it works, you know, is is you know Bitcoin D and then Counterparty D, and you know Counterparty D is basically parsing the you know Bitcoin blockchain and kind of you know pulling out the metadata. Yeah. And interpreting. Okay, and here they're showing the metadata to the mm -hmm. to the browser. Okay, so if we look at the assets, ah, so you can create your own asset and you just give it some kind of name. Yep. Is it is this first come first serve or can they be can you specify whatever asset name that you want? Yeah, I mean there's no yeah it's it's like domain name um, you know <laughs> registration you go and you can get it and once you have it you have it so. Hmm. Um, so so I hear you have your own asset. That's true yeah so one one really cool feature about the um, counterparty is a sort of dividend feature um, that allows you to issue coins to um, or assets to people who have an existing asset. Um, so if some people are doing this right now for mining operations. They say, I need 10 Bitcoins to fund you know, this mining operation and they sell some coins. And then when there's profit on that operation, they distribute the Bitcoin back to everyone um, you know, via these sort of dividends. Yep. Um, and um, there's a lot of cool things that can be done with that feature. And what we decided to do is create our own thing, Swarm, that allows us to create this, you know, basically easy layer of access to coins and help people launch their own coins. Um, and then that basically gives people um, the, you know, the, whenever we launch another coin, then the people who have Swarm coins get coins back. 
So it's kind of like it's always um, generating new coins. Um, I just searched for a swarm and I see swarm, swarm agents, swarm corpse, swarm love, and swarm pre. Which yeah. which one should we take a look at? Probably swarm pre. Swarm so. pre. So this is for the for the pre-sale that you're doing with uh, with Swarm Corp. Yeah, we finished the pre-sale uh, a couple of days ago, uh, mainly targeting people who are already active as sort of open source development on the counterparty platform. Uh, we issued the first kind of four, four million coins of our our fundraiser. So, so we have the total amount issued is four, yeah, four million. Uh huh. And um, you know, you can include this stuff. The description is all kind of in there, and and the other things like the you know the logo and and things like that via json so um and then you can see here are the shareholders so i click on shareholders and then see which are the okay so these are the bitcoin addresses that have a uh, okay so this this person has 17 comma point seven uh, percent okay so basically yeah these are all the different people who participated um in the in the pre-sale I have no, you know, obviously, it's just the address. Right, you don't know which person this is or which which persons. Okay, mm -hmm. but you can click on the addresses also and see what other assets those people hold and what transactions they've done. Uh, so, so you have. So this guy has had a lot of XCP. Um, yeah, that's pretty substantial now, as well. Let's look at another one. Okay, so this is Some just the kind of new addresses, or yeah. I see. And, and how will the dividend payout work? How do you how do you trigger that? Um, right now, it works on the command line. So you know you have to be running Counterparty D, the full node, and then you know you issue it. Um, there, there's pretty good documentation around around that. And then what? So based on the amount of of swarm pre they hold, they get a uh, well a certain amount. But what is the what's the what's the asset that you're issuing? Are you issuing bitcoins or XCP or, or are you well, you know, like we're looking at you know, other issuing other coins so on, on the Swarm platform. So we have a, a number of projects that um, have signed up and are very, very interested to kind of announce formally. But um, And these fall into a couple of different categories. One is sort of like, um, you know, projects that are done uh, via sort of open source software um, kind of supporting this whole ecosystem. So. We're looking at you know maybe some kind of mobile wallet that supports these counterparty because the the wallet services right now aren't um, you know super mobile friendly, and um, we're looking at um, you know also this sort of accelerator type thing where you actually have a a formal I don't know if you know how accelerators work but basically someone says here we have you know two hundred fifty thousand dollars and we're gonna have an application process. That runs for thirty days, and then you know everyone will submit their ideas, and then we'll choose five of these projects and give them each fifty thousand dollars, and then um, you know take a certain percentage of the equity um, in, in those companies, um, and then you know if the company does well, then it's great, and if they don't, then, <laughs> then they lose the money. Um, but um, you know this has worked fairly well. There's kind of this Y Combinator model, and we want to apply the same thing to crypto. So have a, a kind of thing, but everything is done via a coin, you know, via a kind of user created asset. And, um, you know, the percentage is taken as, you know, every single project, you know, has its own thing and they have to find some way to make sure that it's reliably compensating the people who participated in the, in the, in the pre-sale. So, so, so we could create a ether uh, coin on, um, on swarm. I'm not sure if it, uh, did you already create one? Um, I did not. We could do that right now, actually. That would be kind of cool. And then we would be selling this to to our shareholders, like our our, our regular listeners. Mm -hmm. And what would they be using this these coins for? I mean, how how do they gain in value? That's the part that I don't really understand. Yeah, what, well. What's... You know, it has to be dependent on the future value of product. So, in in a kind of startup context. Um, you know, there's a very uncertain value early on as to whether something's going to be successful because a lot of these ideas are very ambitious mm -hmm. um, and a lot of them fail. <laughs> Some of them, you know, the ones that don't fail, you sometimes hear of and you, you know, become billion dollar companies or something. But um, so there's a lot of, you know, sort of uncertainty in the early stages. 
of this stuff, which is kind of what makes early stage investing exciting. No, but, but let's take the example of Ethercast. So if we were to issue a, an asset for, on the counterparty for Ethercast and we would be selling that via SwarmCorp, how would we use it? How would we use it ourselves then after this initial sale? What will be the, the benefit for people holding onto this? What would it make? Uh, yeah, you know, we'd have to offer something that is exclusive, you know, that requires it. So, you know, if we were holding, you know, special Ethercast parties or something, you know, after, you know, some, the first Ethereum summit, which, you know, who knows when that'll happen, but, yeah. um, you know, then we could say that you have to have, you know, an Ethercast coin to get access to the party or something like that. Um, you know, so you have to, you have to figure out something that's valuable to the other party um, to actually create the value of, of the, of the token. So or, or, or maybe make like like member only screencasts. So so not only if you have access to the coin, if you sell a coin, you can you can watch this these episodes or you can download them. Yeah, or we could even say for the first like you know three weeks or something, it's only available to members and then, you know available to the public later on. So you get early access. And how will people be using then these coins? How will they show that they have access to this? How will they prove that they have these uh, intercast uh, tokens? Um, so the, it's not so diff, I mean, as you can see the shareholders or something on here is very, very easy to figure out who has how many coins. Um, so you would have to do something, some kind of authentication that relates to the Bitcoin address. Um, and there are a variety of ways to do that. Um, I don't offhand know the best way or what we'll do. So you could sign, you could sign a message with the private key of this address and then we could verify that they, they have this. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And they could also be spending this coin, or they could be selling their their share. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, I mean, the, this decentralized exchange is awesome for that because you can kind of trade them as you want, whenever you want, um, you know, for any other asset that's created. So it's not just in and out of Bitcoin or in and out of something else. It's for anything else that's existing. So I guess then the dividends that we could issue would be like minutes, like Ethercast minutes. So shareholders, they get minutes like every month or every year, something like that. And they can, can use that to watch our episodes. So they can, and then they can sell these minutes or they can trade them or use them themselves to watch your content. Yeah, that's very interesting. Huh. Yeah. Okay. So let's, can, well, maybe let, let's park the Ethercast ID for, uh, for, 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 no, for another time, but let's, let's see. So can, how can we use this? How can I, how can I interact with counterparty? Do I need to download anything? Do I need to install anything? Yeah, you basically have two options at the moment, R really um, uh, three, but um, let's start with the two. So I said you can set up counterparty D, yeah. Bitcoin D, and run it via command line. Then you have all the different features, um, but then you also have this web interface called CounterWallet. All right. Um, that's, yeah. And that's a bit like the Bitcoin.info uh, wallet where everything is encrypted client side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, right. so I, I think Electrum works the same way or something. Yeah. So. Okay, so I go to Counter Wallet. Yeah. Welcome to Counter Wallet. Create a new wallet. Okay, let's do that. Yeah. And now, of course, everybody will see my um, my secret uh, secret password. So maybe this is not the, the best example. <laughs> let's let, let's do this in, in, uh, again, but then off off screen, or I'll just uh, I'll just blank it out. Okay. Hang on. Let me open a new window. Always interesting these live demos. Don't do this at home. <laughs> okay, so I have my uh, secret word. Mm -hmm. I go back to counter wallets, and now I use this to to log in. Yeah. Let me let me also store it. So if I if I lose this uh, this password, then I'm uh, screwed. Okay, so I have my secret password. I log in. I open my wallet. Uh, I need to agree to some kind of license. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's all okay. Okay. So what's this? What uh, what am I looking at, uh, Joel? I have my my own wallet. I see I have a couple addresses. Yep. So in some ways, it works like any other, um, you know, Bitcoin wallet. Um, you have your Bitcoin, and you can see them. You can send them. You can receive. You know, and that's your. You see your address. Yeah. That's your public address. 
Um, and then if you click on the my address one, um, you can set like a little label. So it just automatically gives you, you know, three to work with. Um, but the kind of cool thing um, about it is that you don't just have one asset class. You have as many asset classes as you have associated with that address. So, so that's the BTC for Bitcoin, XCP, and then Swarm Pre and whatever. So there will be many. Yeah. I don't know how many boxes fit in the screen, like eight. Um, yeah, I mean, they, you know, they tile down. So you oh, can okay. More. Even more than eight. Okay, so now I want to I wanna get some I want to get some swarm pre. So first of all, I guess I need to fund my That's right. My so holding that's account. So I have a Bitcoin address and I guess I need to send some bitcoins here. Yeah. Mm, let me see. So can I No. Yeah, you're not going to be able to send it. Oh yeah, you can show your QR code. Please. Show QR code. Okay. So I have my QR code. And then let's um Let's wait for our uh, viewers to fund this account. I'm sure they're very generous. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I don't know this worked so well last time. We, we got, I think, about seven euros worth of Dogecoin or something, but. Huh. Well, uh, that's pretty good. It took, yeah, it was, it was good, you know, two beers or something, right? So, two, three beers. Uh, yours, I don't think our viewers are. Uh, I'm gonna fund this entire for us. I, I just sent some Bitcoin to it myself. <laughs> uh, will will the screen automatically refresh, or do we need to? Uh... I think it automatically refreshes. Yeah, it it will take a full confirmation. So, okay. so we got one confirmation. All right, so as you can see, it's a, it's a regular Bitcoin payment. So I sent some Bitcoins to this address. It got one confirmation, and now we just wait for the counter wallet to uh, to pick this up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, maybe I can show the other wallet in between. So we just got the the Bitcoin address here. Right. The Bitcoin amount. Okay, I have point uh, oh two three. Well, basically ten euros worth of Bitcoin in my uh, in my holding account. And you're, you mentioned there were these vending machines, so you could just send some Bitcoin to an address of a vending machine, yep. and it would trade you that for, for some other assets. Exactly. And that's what we're using for our fundraiser, for our crowd sale. And actually, this is uh, this is open source software, I believe. So there's this uh, vent.io. Yeah. And yep. you can set up your own vending machine. So this is like, a, well... A sponsored exchange or you have uh, I don't know how you would explain that so it's uh, it's it's still it still uses the the, the infrastructure so this this is a centralized in, a centralized instance but it's very simplistic I mean there's not a lot of infrastructure there's no website where you first need to register and deposit anything just by sending the Bitcoin anything to a Bitcoin address or to a XP address uh, you get something in return for the for yeah the exactly and, rate. and it's secure as well because um you know the the vending machine can listen on a, an address that it doesn't control. You know, so ah yeah, of course, yeah. yeah. So there can be any yeah any address that it listens on. Okay, so do you have any address for me that I can use to? Uh... Yeah, so you know the the whole thing that we're doing in the fundraiser um, is you know using this sort of vending machine technology and you know and the main fundraiser which is starting this evening at midnight Berlin time. Um, you know, it starts at fifty-two fifty swarm per uh, Bitcoin, and then um, you know, basically, with every Bitcoin that comes in, that de you know decreases slightly um, until we kind of hit our you know first goal of whatever four thousand Bitcoins. So then, um, uh, and then by that time, the, the the exchange rate will have gone down to forty-seven fifty um, swarm pre per per Bitcoin. So that's like basically you sending it to that address. And then it's automatically sending you back those uh, those swarm pre um, after four confirmations. So it was starting out at four thousand per Bitcoin. Mm, uh, no, it's starting at fifty two fifty per Bitcoin. Okay, so, so let me see. So we have fifty two fifty times zero point zero two three three nine. So this. Well, I could buy like 122 swarm pre with this amount, yeah. about-ish. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so I want to send this something. I yep. want to send. I just send it to a to a Bitcoin address that you uh, that you gave me. Yeah. And I want to basically send you the full amount. Okay. Oh, that's pretty nifty. Okay. Uh, uh, let's send that. Okay. So it will take a. Well, now it is sending. And I bet it takes a couple confirmations before the vending machine uh, triggers the payout. So your this is we're capturing an epic moment right here, um, because you know the the counter wall allows you to do lots of cool things like issuing your own asset, um, and um, and controlling the issuance of that asset. So right now, I, I issued the 100 million um, swarm points that are available on the fundraiser, um, but I still haven't locked it because that, so that means I can still go here whoop, and then issue as many more points as I want. Sorry, but you said that you issued 4 million and now you have 100 million? No, I issued 4 million of the swarm pre that were available in the pre-sale or whatever this during the, the crowd sale period and then at the end of the crowd sale, there all of these swarm coins are going to be distributed to everyone who has the swarm pre. Uh -huh. Yeah. So that's the idea. That's how kind of the dividend feature also allows us to do that. So swarm pre gives us a little security or whatever else so the, um, for the, this period. And then these will all go out at the end. Exactly. But we still, and I assume that's true for you since I think you have some swarm pre, you probably don't want us to just go and create a whole bunch more swarm because we feel like it. That sure, that would, my, that would delete, dilute my share. Yeah. Exactly. So what we need to do, and I think now is a very good time to do that, is actually lock this. So now once it's locked, you will not be able to issue more units of it in the future. So let's, uh, let's lock it for the, the main sale. Ta-da! Bum, 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 bum. So it still needs a block to confirm. But okay. We, we now actually lock that asset. Hmm. So it's ready for the sale. So now it's locked. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Very cool. I think I'm going to take a shot in celebration. Cheers. Cheers. So that, got, that took a couple of minutes to, uh, I guess, for the vending machine to quick on. It, uh, it took four confirmations, and now I'm holding on to, uh, to some swarm pre. Yeah. Uh, 184. That's even more than expected. What did they say? I don't remember exactly what you said, but um, you know, I'm updating the the vending machine today to to have the you know correct um, sale for the open phase one. So you still have uh, the old vending machine, which is probably still vending out at a, at a preferred exchange rate. Nice, 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 nice. You got lucky here. So, so let's see what actually happens. So I sent my bitcoins to the the address of the vending machine. It's monitored by the vending machine. Now we have eight confirmations. I think it took like four or five for it to kick in. Mm -hmm. um, and if I look at the block scan for my own address, I also see that I was, I received some swarm pre. Yeah, exactly. At this block, right? Okay. Okay. Uh, actually, who is paying the fee for this? We're paying the fee. Yeah. <laughs> From which? Well, I, I I paid the fee when I sent the yeah. Bitcoin address. Yeah. Right. So and you were paying, paying a fee when you were sending me the swarm pre. That's right. No. Mm -hmm. And this is fee in XCP. No, no. I mean, because it's all done on the, the Bitcoin blockchain, every counterparty transaction is also a Bitcoin transaction. So you have to pay the minor fee in Bitcoin. Okay. So okay. if I want to send some some swarm pre, uh, I'm getting echo, Joel. Yeah. La la la. La la la. La la la. La la la. That's better. Okay. So actually, if I want to send these swarm pre forward, I still need some Bitcoin holdings as well. That is correct. And they will be used. Yeah. So it's not very, you know, specified very clearly here if, if um, but you do need it. So. Okay. Um. Yeah, what's what's next? Uh, now I have my swarm pre nets. Now now I need to wait for the dividends to kick in. Yeah, you know you need to wait for um, you know future swarm launches, and it's one of the cool things we're doing now is we're sort of accepting applications, and you know people are emailing us at 
info at Swarm Corp with their ideas of coins they'd like to launch. And we have a pretty good, you know, idea of what some of our next coin launches will be. Um, and I'm actually really excited about all of them. So, and we keep getting really like good ideas um, every day. So the real crowdfunding starts in 11 hours and 26 minutes. Okay, so by the time this is online, people can go to Swarm Corp and they can, uh, I guess, basically use the same process, right? So you explain how it works, how you get, how you can buy it, how you create a wallet, yep. how you fund it with Bitcoin, then the address to be announced, it will be disclosed. Yeah, at midnight. At midnight. Will it be the same address that I already used? Um, I am planning to switch it over to a different address, so. Okay, yeah. all right. So don't use the address that uh, that we were using in the video. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and here's you have the issuing rates. Yeah. And this is rate. this is also configurable in the vending machine, so you can like program it. It's not in the official release of the vending machine. So the the source code or whatever that w we were looking at, um, yeah, yeah, it's not there. It's some kind of modifications we've been adding on. But um, yeah, it is in in our version of the vending machine. Do you know who will be uh, will be buying this? Did, did you find some some big big issuers, big big interesting parties for for the sale? Yeah, you know we were talking to some whales, I guess, um, and seeing you know what kind of whales will jump in. That'd be obviously good for for us and for the whale to get in early. Maybe uh, maybe you should talk to Greenpeace. I, I hear they have been wasting a lot of money recently, and they love whales. So that sounds like a good match. That is a very good point. Although, you know, sometimes you have to chase the whale first to, and ride us back or something. And I don't think that always works out so well in the end. All right, Joel. Good luck with that. Good luck with your lunch. Yeah, well, thank you, uh, yours. And um, yeah, join the swarm. <laughs> <laughs>